Hi, this is a quick video I'm going to do. I pretty much completed the guitar and the, one of the last steps I do before I really just clean it all up and get it packed away to ship is I fine tune the resonances in the guitar. Um, in, in this case, it's sort of a medium to small body guitar and I picked um, a set of resonant frequencies. Um, actually, I'll include a picture of a chart from uh, Trevor Gore had on, you know, what he thought were good combination resonant frequencies that he'd gotten from sampling a lot of different guitars. But I was going to pick 180 hertz for the top resonance, 95 for the air, and um, I'd hope to get 226 for the back, so that basically um, it started right in the middle of a range for a steel string, um, sort of medium-sized steel string guitar. The um, Where I'm at now, from my initial measurements, which I'll actually show later on, you know, getting those, is um, I'm at about 97 for the air resonance, um, 185 for the top, and 250 for the back. The um, 97 and the 185 are great because as I lower the back, I'll be able to basically drop those in right at around 95 and 180. Um, as they're all fully coupled, as I lower the back, it'll lower the top and the air, you know, will also lower as well. I mean, the top will see the biggest effect. I mean, when I carve the back, free, back braces, back brace, the back will see the biggest change, the top, the next biggest change, and just a small change will happen in the um, air. So, I mean, the whole idea is I'll do a spectrum, take, get a spectrum sample using visual analyzer, which I'll show, it, you know, later on. Um, and then once I get a, a feel for where I'm at, I'll loosen the strings, reach in the sound hole, and I have a couple of planes here, and you know a little bit of sandpaper. So I'll start carving the back brace, and you know constantly checking to watch as the back frequency goes down. But why that's happening, I'll I'll watch the the top um, frequency as well. And I'd like this guitar to be at 180, but the back's a little high for that. And 170, uh, the top's a little high for 170, you know, by carving down the back. So my guess is that if I could reach somewhere around 240 for the back, which is five se semitones above a 180 hertz top, and the 95 air, I'll be happy. So I'll actually go through and you'll see me doing a bunch of it. Um, so anyway, on to the show. The way I'll tune the back is is by taking this brace on the lower bout down. I, I'll be using a, I'll be using a set of hand planes and um, sandpaper and um, whatnot. Now go through the sound hole to carve the carve that down. So what what you'll be watching is first I'll take use visual analyzer to take a, a spectrum graph of the guitar resonance. I'll detune the strings, take another one so I could sort of see, you know, what's happened to it once I loosen the strings so that um, I could get an idea of the strings effect will be. And then I'll start tuning the, um, the, the back brace down. I will um, hope to um, not have to tune it up and tune it down a bunch of times. We'll see it first going to um, the visual analyzer. In, um, on Trevor Gore's website, he has a um, technical document on how to set up Visual Analyzer. It's in the resource section, I think, of his website. Anyway, I may post a link with the video. I'm going to capture Spectrum. Before I've done that, I, I've set up Visual Analyzer and made a couple changes from the, um, a few changes for, from the default. I changed these values, the sample size. 16384 and the frequency sampling to 11025 and in the capture 
10 samples, 10 buffers to average out before the graph is made. Um, so anyway, we'll see how this goes. Capture spectrum. So this is a spectrum graph of the guitar currently. Um, you can see where my target was um, 95. I'm right around 97. Uh, pretty close, 96.638. Um, I'm at 185 for the um, top and the back is yeah, that's not the back. The back's really around here. It's 250. I'm not sure with this peak. Just just to make sure, I get to just tap the back and see what resonant frequency, because this one seems sort of out of line with that, what I expected. So we'll, we will um, get rid of this and do one more, just checking the back. So there's the air, there's the top, there's that funny frequency, but the back, here's the back at, uh, here's the back at 249. I'm not sure what that peak is, but here's the back at, at 249. So um, I'm going to start carving the back. And the reason I picked this one because it's the it's the louder one, and I've been tapping on the back. So now I got to loosen up the strings, start carving back the brace. Um, just need to loosen up the strings so I get my hand in the sound hole. Good to keep the strings long and when doing all this work. Otherwise, you go through a lot of sets of strings. As I said, first thing I'm going to do is um, retest the spectrum to make sure that it's still somewhat um, correct with the strings loosened. And it's pretty much the same now, so I'll be able to do um, measurements.
Yeah, now the back comes out pretty nice. You can see it very clearly at the at the 250. So I find that brace. fun doing all this by feel here. Some off. I'll see what it what it's done to the frequency response here. air is still pretty much the same, it's come down like a tenth, but the top's come down to um, like 183, um, and the back is 249. So that hasn't made a big difference on the back yet, 248. So I will uh, do this again. Okay, I've done this a whole bunch of times now. Um, I don't know, maybe eight or nine times, you know, what I, you know, I would carve down the brace and test, carve down the brace and test. Um, I think I'm pretty close now, probably where I'll end up, but um, I'll give it a shot and see what happens. Now the strings still aren't wound up, but you can sort of see what happens here is um, the um, air is right around 95. The top is at little, it's almost 181. Now look at the back, how clear that is now. And you see a bunch of other peaks that came in from the very first one because the back is more active. So it's affecting the top more and it's at 240. So 
Now, I'm not going to be able to get that down to 226, but I could see that it's well coupled because it is, it, it did, we were able to move the top frequency down 5 hertz. And then, um, you know, the graph looks just way different now with um, way more resonant peaks in it than there were, more like what I expect from a falcade. So I'm going to tighten up the strings, come back, and see how everything sort of stands out now. Okay, here's where I ended up with, with the strings all tuned up. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit so you get uh, a better picture of the whole spectrum response up to maybe like where was so far. Um, but anyway, um, for the first monopole, I ended up at right around 95, which is where I, I wanted to. Um, And then the top frequency ended up, I don't know, 180 in a bit. And the back I ended up at a right around 240. So these are all good frequencies to be at. Um, so um, just get, I think I gotta, I gotta stop here and, and um, finalize the guitar. So the air is right on the, the, um, the uh, top's right on, and the back is coupled nicely. I mean, um, you know, with it, before I reduce the, um, you know, loosen up the back a bit, you know, it was, I was having trouble even finding the back, you know, because it was so small, but now you can see it's a, you know, pretty major peak and the frequency response. So anyway, that's modal tuning for you. Um, maybe you could tell the difference in sound from the very beginning. be it.